Aloha and welcome to Crossroads in Learning. I am your host, Keisha King. It is a joy to have you with us here again today in my home studio where we have conversations that are real and relevant. Today is no different. We, have a, we will have a discussion about the Black pandemic. That is the pandemic that's been going on for over 400 years. However, this time it's different because we were in the midst of a global pandemic dealing with the coronavirus. Today, I have three lovely guests who will share their opinions and their passionate and heartfelt emotions about the protests that have taken place recently after the death of George Floyd and Breonna Taylor. We have with us the, uh, uh, let's see, satellite, I want to say, <laughs> Kristen Brown and Hello. Ashley Lyons and my very own firstborn, Brianna King. Welcome to The Crossroads. Why don't we start, uh, let's see, at, with our remote guest, Kristen Brown. Why don't you tell us uh, who you are and what you'd like the people to know about you? Aloha. Thank you so much for having me, Ms. King. It's a pleasure to be here with you all today, or virtually with you all today. Um, I am a recent 2020 graduate from James Campbell High School here on Oahu, Hawaii. Um, I am 18 years old. I am passionate about climate justice and the environment, as well as Black Lives Matter and also just creating justice in the United States surrounding Black lives. And again, I'm very grateful to be here. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you, it's totally my pleasure. Please work with me while we're working with our sound and mics. Um, it's always a pleasure to speak with you. Kristen, you are very humble. I wanna mention one award that I'm fully aware of that you received and that was the NAACP Academic Excellence Awards, if I'm not mistaken. You were the recipient for 2020 and we applaud you. Congratulations on that. Thank you. Next, Brianna King, why don't you introduce yourselves to the people and tell us what you'd like for us to know about you. Aloha, my name is Brianna King. I'm 24 years old from Richmond, Virginia. I moved to Hawaii three and a half years ago and um, I went to the Friday and Saturday protests. Um, I was very passionate about the murder of Breonna Taylor, it affected me very deeply. And I felt like it was my due justice and it would do her justice. It was my time to go out there and speak on something that um, affected my people and affected my family personally. It was my moment to go out there and fight for a cause greater than myself. All right, thank you so much. I'm very proud of the fact that you went and I wanna hear more of your thoughts. Last is Miss Ashley Lyons. Aloha, everybody. Um, my name is Ashley Lyons. I also go by Ashley D, which is my stage name. I'm a local comedian here in Honolulu. Um, so many people know me um, as a comic here. Um, I'm also a black mother with three black sons. So the situations that have taken place has um, affected me deeply and has continued to affect me deeply, deeply, I mean, forever, as it has with all of us uh, Black people. So I'm excited to talk about it today and get real and get raw and uh, let the people know what's going on. All right. Well, thank you all so much for being here. This has been probably one of the most challenging springs we've ever had at the beginning of March or probably about the middle of March is when they canceled school and they began um, sharing the pandemic that was going on for our health. So they began having these conversations saying, we're gonna shut down and it was something rather small. It changed, however, when we think um, back to a lot of people being home for longer than two weeks. And I think that started off at the beginning of April and we had people who were losing their jobs Brianna, I know you're a small business owner as a cosmetologist here. What happened for you when 
you heard that the businesses were shutting down. How did that make you feel? Well, at first I was um, thinking this is a nice vacation I can have. Um, you know, at first when you're a little skeptical when you hear, oh, you know, sickness is going around, it's only affecting this and it's only affecting that. So at first I was like, hmm, I've been ripping and running. I can sit at home for a week. Um, once I found out that it was hitting, it was, you know, circling quickly, you know, it was getting more and more serious. It affected my business, yes. Um, it affected my livelihood and it also affected my mental. Um, being at home when you're normally around a lot of people is tough. So um, I, my mental was very affected and it got a little more serious as it went along. So that was the Ashley, I'll ask you, um, I know that you are a project manager in addition to being a local comedian, and you work very hard on a project that is very important to the people of Hawaii. Why don't you tell us what that project is to the best of your ability? I promise we won't get upset. We Wait till you hear what it is. So <laughs> I'm actually not the project manager, but I assist the project manager. So just if y'all have a problem, it ain't me. <laughs> just to set the record straight. But I actually work for a construction engineering company who is um, building the rail. I know the rail is a touchy uh, subject on the island. So um, please be nice to me, people. <laughs> uh, but we are working hard um, to uh, get it finished and complete, okay? <laughs> All right. So here we were in the midst of that. And Ashley, you were in 12th grade trying to finish your senior year of high school. Kristen, didn't I say that? Did I say Christian? I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Ms. Brown, <laughs> tell us what was it like for you during your senior year, just as proms should have been taking place and we had the health pandemic. At first, when everything started, it was right after spring break and we were told uh, spring break is gonna be extended until the end of March and then it continued to April and so on until it was canceled and that was very at first it was cool like we don't have to go back to school and then after we realized you know there's not going to be a prom there's not going to be a graduation we won't get to actually formally say goodbye to our peers that kind of hit a nerve and it was very upsetting at first and very not how senior year is supposed to turn out. It's just like, if I would have known in December what I know now, I probably would have done things differently. I would have, you know, cherished my friends a bit more and made more memories and things. Back now that it's, you know, spring break when everything happened, it kind of hurts a little bit more. So, but, you know, we're making memories and like Miss Brianna, my mental, you know, the first couple months is okay, but after a while of being in self-isolation or, you know, being at home all the time, it's just kind of it's not as fun anymore. It loses this effect of relaxing, kind of just is boring and not fun anymore. So yeah. we're making I can, yeah. I can totally relate as an educator here locally. I know what it's like to have been home for so long. And initially it was an extended spring break and we were just happy. Oh, we were so happy. But then it turned into something else. And many of us turned to the television. We started watching Netflix episodes. And I have a confession to make because I'm an educator and my preference is to read. So many people don't know this. As much as I love to be on TV, I did not own a TV. And so it was until the second week of the pandemic uh, or until this, I guess that would have been the third week of the pandemic that I bought a TV and I got it for 20 bucks and that's what made me get it. So, <laughs> so I got the TV and I just started watching Netflix and whatever else was on. And then that's when it happened. I think it was Ahmad first. And I just saw the young man who seemed to be jogging and minding his business. And he was shot dead in the street by two men who were not police officers. And Brianna, were you affected by that one? I know that you mentioned Brianna Taylor often, but 
you saw that one. What effect did his death have on you at a time when we had nothing else to do but watch TV? Um, well, I didn't watch that video. Uh, I haven't watched all of the George Floyd video. Um, I do my research. I look into things, but being that we were already in quarantine and being that no matter what social media outlet you looked at, that was always in your face. It affected me. It was heavy. It was very heavy. It was like a um, in the twilight zone of no, you were no escaping it. Everywhere you looked, everything was always wrapped around it. And it's not as if I didn't want to support and be there with my people and mourn with them. Um, I, I could not handle it. Mm-hmm. And I think that, you know, that was the spark that started it because not only are we losing our jobs, not only are our funds getting low, not only is food getting low, we're in the house, we have nowhere else to look, and everywhere we look, we're looking at that video being added to the vault of videos we already have showing you killing us. So I did not watch. Once I saw that someone was pointing a gun at him, I turned it off. And the sad part about it is that that never really turned it off. Mm -hmm. It was always still replaying because I already knew how it ended. Mm -hmm. So that's how it affected me. Mm. You know, you you chose some very powerful words. You said there is a vault of scenes like that. And I think one of the things that triggers us as African-Americans is that this isn't new. This isn't new. This is, there is a history of over 400 years of evidence that shows they are killing us. And I think the only thing that has changed is that it's being televised. Ashley, can you tell, talk to us about it being televised now via our cell phones and, and what effect that has had on what we are calling the Black pandemic? Um, it's to me, I've actually, before Ahmad's video came out, I'd actually made a, a conscious effort to not view um, another black person being killed on video for Ahmad. So I hadn't even, you know, watched a lot of these videos that had taken place before, just because I am um, very much an empath. So um, I know how, if, you know, if I see something, it'll it, it'll mess with me for a, a bit. Uh, I'm talking about losing sleep. I'm talking about crying. And I'm talking about like, I feel it like a different, I just, I'm the person that it's happening to. And I know it takes me a little minute to get up out of that. So I've made a conscious effort, right, to not uh, view. So when Ahmad's uh, video thing came out, uh, I, when I clicked on it, I really wasn't, because the video that I clicked on really didn't have a full description, right? So I clicked on it, not fully knowing what I was about to see. And I remember saying, and I even made a post on Facebook and said, you know, my spirit is all messed up after watching that video. You know, I should not have watched that video. Uh, The fact that it's being televised and constantly pushed down our throats uh, as if to say, you know, y'all can televise this all you want to but we still gonna do what we do. It's dehumanizing us and desensitizing the situation. So therefore, like many of the videos before, and people have talked about this, about it being just another hashtag. We say it's just another hashtag because we see it happening all the time and it's desensitizing us because they're shoving it down our throats all the time. So now when you lock us up in the house during a pandemic, like she said, low on food, low on money, your emotions are already high, and then you throw this on top of the icing on the cake, you know, it's going to spark like, you know, wow. But we had no clue that we were going to get further news about more people. Exactly, and that's what, you know, makes this even worse. I think is that there were so many other horrible things already happening 
And that was only the beginning. We had two more tragic deaths afterwards, and we had no way of knowing what was coming each time. We felt the pain of one, and before we could fully digest what we had witnessed, here comes another one. Kristen, I want to turn to you because you were one of the youth organizers for each of the marches. And I want to, and if you don't mind, please give a shout out to some of your other colleagues who were also co-organizers with you and ask you, we hadn't gotten to George Floyd's death at this time. And yet you all were affected because you were out of school and saw all of this. What affected each death having you to make you get to the point of organizing? I really think that from seeing what's been happening on the mainland and then being fed up with what is happening and the lack of action behind it, we as youth decided that we wanted to do something to make a change. And that's what we try to do and what we hope is affect what we hope is coming off as doing so. Um, I know it's really hard and like what has been touched on before, being isolated and being in, having Instagram to look at, that's actually something that is currently messing with my mental health right now. I have to delete the app and it's actually like when you scroll and all you see is people that have died or people, more hashtags and it's like, what else has happened? What injustice has happened? And a lot of times you have a hopeless feeling like, is whatever I do won't make a difference because it's been happening for 400 years. What else could I do? But I know a lot of the youth were trying to actually combat the problem and actually make a change. Enough is enough. And that's what we tried to have come across at our marches and our peaceful protests that what's happening on the mainland does not need to happen here. And while also creating the protest, it's to allow the black community a space to just grieve and to actually let out their emotions in a peaceful way here on the island. So that's a big reason why we did this. Thank you so much for saying that. You're exactly right. We need a space where African Americans can just breathe. And Ashley and Brianna, you both mentioned such key points in speaking about how this is another hashtag, there's another name, there's another catchphrase. You know, um, I know that there's several memes out there that say, where can you be black? And where can you be black and protest? They didn't want us to kneel during the football games, right? And that was very calm and peaceful, but it interrupted their game and it was um, a disrespectful act towards the flag. Right. Um, we're going to take a quick break, but when we come back, we're going to talk about the two deaths that followed that caused the eruption. And hopefully by the end of this just regular conversation, we're hoping to talk about action steps. We want to get people motivated to move forward to do the political things that will get us the results that we so desperately need. Because it's one thing to protest, and certainly we needed that. And we applaud Hawaii for the peaceful protests that we've had. But then we also need to take some action, action steps, okay? Because the name of this show is Crossroads, Crossroads and Learning. And we want to get to that crossroad and know what direction to move in next. So we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we will discuss the rest of that. Mahalo. Aloha and welcome back to Crossroads and Learning. We've been talking about the Black 
pandemic, which has always been going on, but certainly has been something of major discourse while we're dealing with the global uh, coronavirus pandemic. Kristen, you were one of the organizers and we stopped with you. I'd like to know, what do you do now moving forward? Moving forward, our goal is to get as many people as we can to register to vote and then in November, go out and vote. Use their voice to create the change that they want. And that is the most powerful way to use our democratic right here in America. Um, also to put on more protests, more peaceful protests throughout the community, but mostly to get people to vote. Very good, very good. Thank you so much. Brianna, what about you moving forward? What do you see yourself doing? And are you back at work? Is your business back together? Well, yes, finally, I'm back at work. Yes, yes. Um, you can find me on Instagram with Everything Beauty, um, Facebook as well. And, um, you know, one thing I've learned is that when you're doing something like this, you want to always remember your why. Stay patient with yourself and stay patient with the process. Um, this hatred, um, this injustice, this inequality wasn't boring overnight, manifested overnight, so the problem isn't going to be solved. So please be diligent, be patient, and continue to use your voice to make a change. All right. Miss Ashley D., first of all, I knew that you were a comedian, but when I saw your video on the news and you told the people, don't bring that over here, you had some very choice words for them which uh, we can't say on TV. You meant that. You meant that. Tell us more about that energy, but then also tell us where can we find you as a comedian and what are your next steps as an activist? Um, I literally have been um, attending majority, I think I've probably only missed maybe about one, uh, majority of the protests that have taken place since the George Floyd uh, video has been released here on the island. So I already knew firsthand that everything had been released, okay? So when the rumors started coming out that, you know, people have was trying to come out here and cause havoc, and that angered me because I was like, okay, this ain't the place for that because we've been big this entire time, and now you're telling me havoc is gonna be caused all of a sudden. That should let you know that the people who really have a heart for this, who are actually really trying to seek change, are not the ones that are trying to disrupt uh, what's going on in this island or not trying to destroy this island. So my heart came out, you know, obviously once I saw the videos. And when I talked to, because I'm from Louisville, Kentucky, where Breonna Taylor was killed. When I, my sisters called me and told me how they were out there on the front line protesting, just like we did here in Hawaii, and got tear gassed and rubber bullets shot at them. I said, I would be remiss to sit here a block away from the beach in sunny Hawaii and act like nothing's going on to my, with my family out there and just sit in my house and not go outside and, and let my voice be heard. So that's what really triggered me to get out there and like push, push, push. And so thankful for the young people who are getting out here and being the organizers. You know, we wouldn't even have the video of George Floyd if it wasn't a 17 year old black girl who opened that floodgate and let us know what's going on. Every single young person I've saw this week and I let them know, I said, you are gonna be the one to open us up. You are gonna be the one to make the make the change. You are gonna be the one to knock on the door of opportunity for us as, as a people. Because as you get older, we have gotten this sense of time. We have, because we've seen it so much. Matter of fact, growing up, our parents told us, you know, this is how you act when you do, when you're around police. When you're around somebody, uh, you know, the white man, this is what you need to do. This is what you need to say. Hey, this is how your voice needs to change. But we're dealing with a generation that's way more different, a generation that's way more emotional, a generation that says, uh-uh, I don't know what y'all was doing before, but it ain't going to work today. And I appreciate these young people. So they inspire me. Thank y'all so much. And also, y'all can catch me at one of these shows when everything starts up and back up. I am a funny comedian. So check me out, Ashley B Comedy on Instagram. <laughs> Don't you just love her? I love them all. And I have to concur that, yes, it's the young people who are taking the lead on this. And we need that. We need that new, young, vibrant, fresh energy. So Kristen, Brianna, and Ashley, you're young too. 
keep doing what you're doing. We need you all. And we need you to become mobilized. So if you're not a member and you're watching this, become a member of the NAACP. Participate in free peaceful protests. Get involved with Black Lives Matter. I understand that Ashley is going to um, activate the Black Lives Matter chapter here on island. And we're looking forward to more results. That's what we want. We don't want words. We don't want you carrying a Bible in front of a church after you tear gas the pastor, okay, and the protesters. We don't want that. We don't need a visual show. We need actual boots on the ground and results in the White House, results with our laws, results in our communities, and the latest hashtag that we're looking at is defund the police. And I can speak for education. You have defunded education for so long that, and we're still functioning. So certainly you can defund the police and make sure that we get the results that we need in the communities that are hardest hit. Thank you so much for watching and for participating. Thank you all for being so vocal and for being out there on the front lines in your own way. I love how you encourage each other and all the rest of us. Kristen, where are you going to go to college? I will be attending Spelman College in the fall with a major in environmental science. All right. Environmental policy. What's your major again? Environmental science. We are not surprised. Make us proud as you have always done and continue to do and then bring some of that energy back home. All right, you've been watching Crossroads and Learning. I'm your host, Keisha King, and we'll be back for more of these conversations that are real and relevant. Until next time, aloha. <laughs>